from the gridiron to the hardwood. James Mesh breaks it all down. It's time for another episode of Cleats and Sneaks. We're back with another edition of Cleats and Sneaks here on ESPN Southwest Louisiana. And we're now a couple weeks into the NFL season. And boys, it's been an interesting one, to say the very least. I know always with week one, you kind of always worry about the people and the national pundits talking about, ooh, here's the Monday's overreaction after week one. And uh, those are just always something I that I try to avoid because we talk about it on our station a lot. I was still the preseason, the first three to four weeks of the regular season. So I don't want to take too much out of it, but there are some interesting things that I do want to note based off of what we've seen after two weeks of NFL football here in 2024. And it's really interesting. As I'm looking at the standings and how it's gone, there's some not surprising results, but then there are also some surprising ones. The ones that I do want to note of, teams and results so far that are not a shocker to me how about the Tennessee Titans being 0-2 you also look at what's kind of going on and this may be a shocker to some of you maybe it's not Cincinnati Bengals also 0-2 to start the season but here's the thing they very easily could be 1-1 had a solid chance of being 2-0 even though they just play absolutely dreadful against the New England Patriots it still ended up being a one-score game Um, but overall, we see this a lot with Joe Burrow since he's gotten into the league. They start off slow. A lot of times, if they get to one and one, you're actually really excited about their chances. But then being 0-2 to start a season is nothing new. It's if you get to the middle part of the season and Joe Burrow's still healthy that you start to get worried about their chances. But as of right now, them being 0-2. It's, it's nothing new. It's not something that you should absolutely worry about. It's, it's uh, kind of irrelevant, I should say. You kind of look at other teams. How about Kansas City Chiefs, 2-0? Two, two uh, Houston Texans, I don't think a lot of us had them being 1-1 one and one or worse. So I really don't put too much stock into it. But I kind of look at the Jacksonville Jaguars, and I'm kind of looking only at the AFC side as of right now. But the Indianapolis Colts and the Jacksonville Jaguars, I would have thought, they would have at least gotten a win one way or another over these first two weeks. But with them both sitting at 0-2 right now, it's kind of interesting. Because the Colts, they lost week one. Anthony Richardson had that absolutely phenomenal 60-yard touchdown to Alec Pierce after he was kind of falling backwards and didn't really have his feet set. And you were just absolutely like amazed by the throw that he was able to make. And it was cool. They still end up losing 29-27 to to the Houston Texans, but they end up losing once again last week. And you're kind of worrying about what's going on right there and are they going to be able to step it up? And you kind of see the percentages before. Big difference on your chances of making the playoffs, whether you're 1-1 one and one or 0-2. Oh and, and it's quite a bit of a drop-off, but kind of seeing some of the teams, because even the Baltimore Ravens are 0-2 oh right now. And you kind of worry about what's going on as of right now based off of what you've seen because they've had quite a few close results so far. Like, it came down to a big toe of Isaiah Likely of them being able to at least tie the game and send it to overtime. But you also remember that John Harbaugh, during that opening game, he actually wanted to go for two. And I feel like they had a really good chance. They had a very good chance even. Not even just my feelings of it all. They had a very good chance of actually sealing a game at Arrowhead in starting the season 1-0, and but then you thought, okay, well, they have a good chance of kind of rebounding and getting to 1-1, one and one. yet here we are, Baltimore Ravens losing to the Las Vegas Raiders 26-23, to and all of a sudden you're looking at them 0-2. You're looking at the Bengals 0-2, and then you even have the Cleveland Browns, which, yeah, they got the win. Who cares week two? Um, but the Pittsburgh Steelers are also another one as of right now that are 2-0. and that I don't think a lot of you should be shocked because how often do we see the Pittsburgh Steelers kind of be bad? Like, that's the thing. Mike Tomlin doesn't allow the team to have a losing record. And them being 2-0 and just kind of feels par for the course. So you kind of look at the standing so far, and you see where everyone is, and it's not quite where I'm sure you expected these teams to be. So you're kind of wondering, are we in panic mode? 
Well, not really. We still got 15 more weeks to go, or 15 more games uh, before we get to the end of the regular season. So there's plenty of time for these teams to right their wrongs and actually kind of get to where we expect them to be and kind of just the law of averages. But as of right now, from what we've seen and kind of talking about the Miami Dolphins, this is really big. Um, you look at what had happened. They win week one, and then you come back to week two, play on Thursday night against the Buffalo Bills. Bills now 2-0. and That's another big one. Um, but you look at what's happened with Miami. Yet another concussion for Tua Tagovailoa, and it's now his really his fourth one. I know that only three have been documented over the last couple of seasons, but really it's, it's four. Um, it's starting to be a really big concern for his health, not only for football-wise, but in his life. Like at the end of the day, we do have to remember that this is football. This is just a game. Yes, this is his job and his career, but at the same time, if it comes down to him having to get an early retirement and having to retire early to make sure that he actually has a good life after football, that's something that is to be seriously considered. But as of right now, the Miami Dolphins have decided to put him on IR, so he's not going to be available for at least the next four weeks. And it's probably going to be a lot longer as he goes to doctors to kind of seek advice on what he should do and what's going to go on with the long term with him and his football career. But kind of looking at the standings overall, a couple of surprises here and there, some not so surprising, whether it's for good or for bad. But as of right now, it's not too crazy, especially since this is early on. Like we're getting into week three tonight with Thursday night football between the New York Jets and the New England Patriots. Like, I wouldn't, I would calm down and pump the brakes. Because even when you look at the NFC side of things, how about those New Orleans Saints? How about that? Who that? 2 and 0 to start the season, 91 points over those two games. First one was 47 to 10 against the Carolina Panthers. And boy, is that interesting. And we'll get to that in just a second. But the New Orleans Saints, a lot of people had them dead in the water, 7 and 10. I'll be honest, I was one of those people. I thought 7 and 10, 8 and 9, 9 and 8. Like, I'm looking in that range, but I kind of saw them as really a team that probably just misses out on the playoffs once again. Um, but as of right now, they have gone an absolute terrible start. You get the 47 to 10 win over the Carolina Panthers. People discredit it. It's just the Panthers. At the end of the day, if you beat a team by 37, I don't care if it's a team that's absolute in the gutters terrible maybe trying to tank or not you're still in the nfl and a 37 point win is a 37 point win i don't care like to me that's it's just so much more impressive than seeing a 37 point win when it comes to two college or high school programs like there's a clear difference in talent whereas it's a lot closer in the nfl but then you get to week two against dallas and what you had seen there the fast start touchdown 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 Five touchdowns in the first half, all five for five on those first five drives. And they just absolutely steamrolled the Cowboys 44 to 19. Like that was absolutely huge. I don't think a lot of people anticipated the absolute beatdown. At least you shouldn't. Like the 25 point difference, I would understand if you had the New Orleans Saints winning that game because there are some people that don't believe in Dallas and don't have them making the playoffs. And I think we all can just agree that Dallas is just always overrated because they're still, for some reason, America's sweetheart. But here we are. The New Orleans Saints getting that 25-point win was crazy. Like, you still see Rashid Jahi getting 70-yard bombs for touchdowns. Alva Kamara getting the four-touchdown day, 180 scrimmage yards. Like, this New Orleans Saints offense has looked absolutely revamped. And as of right now, it has looked like a renaissance of things. And you can tell the Houdat Nation is all about it. The huge difference in points. 91 total to just 29 given up. The defense has played really good so far, getting seven total sacks, five turnovers. Like Alante Taylor, he's really stepped up and he's kind of embraced that nickel roll in the slot. And you love to see it. Like the team app, as of right now, there's injuries here and there. They're kind of nicked up. But as of right now, there's no significant injuries like you see with some of these other teams, especially in the NFC and kind of looking at other teams that are actually kind of a shocker, like, like I was bringing up earlier with the AFC. Like, how about the Los Angeles Rams? 
You look at them right now through the first two weeks, they're 0 and 2, and they got some big time injuries. Now, week one was against the Lions, and the Lions, I think we can all project them to be a really good team, even though they did lose to Tampa Bay and kind of squandered an opportunity to be 2 and 0 as they're 1 and 1 right now. But the Rams, you lose Cooper Cup week one, that's a huge blow. Then you look at week two, Cooper Cup then goes down. And the first two receivers for Matthew Stafford, the two guys that he loves going to, they're gone. No more Tyler Higby. You're kind of just relying on Kyron Williams right now because Demarcus Robinson at this point is your wide receiver one. Plus there's multiple injuries on that offensive line. Aaron Donald has retired. And there's also guys on the defensive side that they either have got rid of in Ernest Jones at linebacker or there's guys that are going on IR now, like John Johnson, they're starting safety. So as of right now, I'm looking at the Los Angeles Rams. I had them making the playoffs and being second in the NFC West. There's still plenty of time, like I had mentioned, that they can come back from it. But as of right now, with the injuries, the slow start, plus this being a competitive division, like how about you seeing the Seattle Seahawks right now at 2-0? and They got a good start. Not quite sure how much longer they'll be able to hold on to that lead, or at least still have the lead in general and keep themselves in contention. But as of right now, they're leading the NFC West at 2-0. and You also look at the 49ers, even though they've got plenty of injuries. The C- Christian McCaffrey, he's on IR. Not quite sure when he'll be able to get back. Hopefully it's soon. But Debo Samuel, he's also injured. And the team right now, they're kind of dealing with a couple of injuries, especially on the offensive line. Not quite sure what's happening there with Trent Williams, but they kind of had that inexplicable loss to the Minnesota Vikings. And Right now, they're 1-1, one and one, but you still expect them to be able to step up and still get wins when it matters the most. Then you also look at the Arizona Cardinals, who also just embarrassed the Los Angeles Rams last Sunday, 41-10. to 10. I mean, that was just an absolute beatdown. It's kind of that coming out game for Marvin Harrison Jr. He had four catches, 130 yards, and two touchdowns, if I'm not mistaken. like That was one of those huge games that I'm sure a lot of fancy owners and people have been anticipating especially after it was just a really disappointing week one for Harrison um but you're kind of looking at some of the other, these other teams Chicago Bears this is really interesting that situation right there with Caleb Williams because we all knew that he was going to be the first overall pick we knew that he was going to go to the Chicago Bears that was a given the big question was what were they going to do at ninth overall a lot of people wanted them to get a wide receiver they did just so in getting Roma Dunze, and that's fine and all. But here's the thing. Just a season ago, they had traded to get DJ Moore, and that was a part of that big trade where the Carolina Panthers trade up to number one to get Bryce Young. I'm sure they're super happy about that decision right now. But you look at them. They also got Keenan Allen from the Chargers, and they have had a dreadful offensive line for years now. You like DeAndre Swift as a running back, but he hasn't been able to do much because the offensive line sucks and can't open holes for them to run through, and they're not giving time for Caleb to even be able to make progress. He got sacked seven times. Could have been a lot more if he wasn't as athletic as he is. Could have very easily been a career and NFL record tying 12 sacks. Like They were over halfway there, and they could have probably gotten to that point if Caleb Williams wasn't able to evade as many sacks as he was able to. But Really, you look at that offense, it's awful right now. Uh, Wide receivers aren't able to be on time with Caleb. It doesn't help that there's a couple of injuries, especially with Keenan Allen. But right now, Chicago is having to rely really heavily on that defense, which is good, but it's not going to be able to win you games, especially if you're relying on a rookie quarterback to try and figure out. But he can't figure it out if he doesn't have time to throw the football. Like That's going to be a really big concern and something that I'm going to monitor over the remainder of the season and the weeks to come. But I also look at teams like the Philadelphia Eagles. They just look so different since they have won that, since they've gone to the Super Bowl. Because last year, Jalen Hurts was injured, but they also had a new offensive coordinator. They end up firing him. Nick Sirianni, ever since that Super Bowl run, it's just kind of been weird with the fan base. Like see, things seem to be really off with them. And I'm really concerned in a sense because when I watch them and they just don't seem the same. Now, A.J. Brown, that's going to be really interesting because he's also going to be out for what is supposed to be multiple weeks 
He missed Monday Night Football's matchup in their loss to the Atlanta Falcons, 22-21, to and that was kind of probably going to be the big difference maker. But when I watch this team, they just do not look anything like we had seen from before. Because Jalen Hurts, he's still running, but he just seems off. Like, I know he was never a prolific passer in college in his start to the NFL career, but it just seems off and more different than it has before. Like, he's still got some weapons, but sometimes he just doesn't get them the ball. For the longest time, he would never throw it to the running backs. And now that you have Saquon, he is getting it to him, and he still gets the ball to Devontae Smith, and he still got it in week one in Brazil to A.J. Brown. But it seems like Dallas Goddard has just been a forgotten piece of this Eagles offense, and it's kind of concerning. Um, but then you look at the defensive side, and that's, to me, even more worrisome because I remember this used to be what we expected to be a great secondary. Really good corners, solid enough safeties, but it really mattered what you had seen from the pass rush and the defensive line to be able to stop the run, and they really can't do any of that. Like, I remember you saw the game-winning drive on Monday Night Football. Kirk Cousins, even though he did not look right at all and look healthy and look ready to go play football after tearing his ACL last year, he goes out there. He looks kind of anemic throughout a majority of the game. Like, they get a couple of somewhat explosive plays here and there, but they're also keeping themselves in the game. Eagles have to settle for the field goal after you see Saquon drop the what we expect to be the first down to secure the game. Eagles settle for the field goal, so now it becomes a six-point game. And then you look at it, and Kirk Cousins is able to just drive right down the field, hitting sideline pass, sideline pass, cross the middle, then ends up hitting the out route to Drake London for the game-winning touchdown. And there was just no resistance. If anything, you saw that Philadelphia almost had a chance to be able to win the game themselves because they had over 30 seconds left. Jalen Hurts ends up throwing the pick, but I'm really concerned about this secondary, and that's going to be a big thing in the Superdome on Sunday because you look at the New Orleans Saints and the history that they've had over the last couple of years. They have struggled against running quarterbacks, and if you see this dynamic duo with Saquon and Jalen Hurts, I think that it's going to be a really interesting test, not only for the New Orleans Saints, but also looking at what can the Eagles do. Can they start to get right even though they don't have – one of their star receivers, but at the same time, how are they going to be able to stop this running game that the Saints have had? Because they're averaging 185 rushing yards per game, and Derek Carr is looking like an absolute new quarterback that no one has ever seen before. Like, this is going to be a really interesting game in the Superdome. I'll be there in person covering for our website, ESPNSouthwestLouisiana.com, but I'm really curious, and this is one of these early season matchups that's kind of give you signs of what you could see from the Saints and Eagles for the remainder of the season. So I'm really curious about that. But you also look at other teams. Tampa, they are absolutely rolling right now. They still got that big win against Detroit on Sunday. They're 2-0 right now as well. But you also look at other teams like the Green Bay Packers, Jordan Love. That's another big injury right there. And you're kind of curious. He might be able to come back for this week. I was seeing reports that he was trying to return to practice and he, there's a question on whether he will be able to or not when it comes to actually suiting up and playing on Sunday. That's another thing to monitor because he did get injured in Brazil. But I am kind of curious to see what happens there. But as of right now, like I said, a couple of surprising results, some not so much, whether it is for good or for bad. But you also look at the Minnesota Vikings. I was about to, I was about to close up, but... I forgot to mention the Minnesota Vikings. This has been absolutely interesting because J.J. McCarthy, he's out for the year. You kind of projected him to be the starter, but as of right now, Sam Darnold's been the man for them. And it's kind of been a career resurrection. And it's kind of interesting to see how that kind of unfolds. And I'm kind of curious since J.J. will be out for the, for the whole year. But I don't think we expected this type of start at all for the Vikings. Um, I think a lot of us projected them to be six wins or less. Maybe they get to that 6-7 win mark if a lot of things go right. and There's still an opportunity for that to happen. But as of right now, the way they've started 2-0 and on the season, the fact that they got the wins that they did last week against the 49ers and then the absolute beatdown on the Giants who, shocker, looked terrible. One of the worst teams just like the Carolina Panthers. The Minnesota Vikings as of right now, they got an interesting gauntlet over the next couple of weeks going against the Texans uh, this Sunday then at Green Bay, 
host uh, the Jets, host the Lions. It's going to be really interesting to see what they're able to do because if they're still able to keep themselves above 500, um, or at least keep themselves at 500, because even if they go one and three over these next four weeks, I don't think it's that bad. The fact that they would be three and three at that point, I think that would be much of an overachievement that a lot of people would be kind of a surprise to say the very least. But then before we wrap up and kind of look at week three slate of games, how about Bryce Young and the Carolina Panthers? This is just an awful situation for a young quarterback, and you can just see that he has not really been able to make any sort of progress. They end up benching him earlier this week. They made that announcement just before week three, and they're going to the Red Rifle, Andy Dalton. He once again gets another opportunity to start for yet another team. I think that'll be good for all sides. I don't think that this will help because I'd still rather just see Bryce Young get out of Carolina because that is just a horrible situation. But I think you'll see more stability, and you'll see a little bit more competitiveness from the Panthers with Andy Dalton, since he's just a seasoned vet. Like, he's been through the ringer multiple times now, not expecting a lot of wins from the Panthers, but I think they'll be at least a little bit more competitive. And if you have any Carolina Panthers on your fantasy teams, I expect to see at least a little bit more of a production, because you look at Bryce Young over the first two weeks, and it's been pretty awful. It's been pretty anemic. It's underwhelming. It's all the adjectives, the way that you want to describe just the word bad. I mean, he's got 245 yards through the first two weeks, and he's got three interceptions, no touchdowns. Like, I, I don't know how else to describe it other than just reading off the stats to you, because it was awful in game one against the Saints. It was arguably even worse last week against uh, the Chargers because he had 84 yards passing. He was 18 of 26. 84 yards passing through an interception. His longest completion was 12 yards. 12 yards. Like, they just don't, they don't have trust in him. He doesn't have trust in himself. He doesn't have trust in the receivers. Like, there, there is just so much mistrust with that whole organization. So I'm kind of glad that they are making the move Give a little bit of a different perspective for Bryce Young. I think that can help him in the long run. But really what's going to help him the most is getting him out of Carolina in general. But then you look at this week's slate of games, and there's some good ones. I didn't think that Texans-Vikings was going to be one of those games that you should really be looking out for. But at noon on Sunday, if you're not watching Saints-Eagles, Texans-Vikings, though, that's one of those big ones. And how about the Chargers and Steelers? Battle of 2-0 and o teams. Um, the Chargers are an interesting one. I thought they were kind of a fringe playoff team that it's not going to be sexy the way they win, but I thought they were going to get wins, and so far they've been able to do so. Um, you kind of look at what happens with Ravens-Cowboys. It feels like if the Ravens go 0-3 here, it might be a, you might have to locate the panic button, not press it, but you want to know where it's at. Rams 49ers is pretty pivotal for both franchises because if 49ers go one and two while you don't have your starting running back, and if Debo is out as well, which is pretty much supposed to be the case, unless something like an absolute miracle happens. Um, if the Rams go 0-3, though, uh, this spells doom for them because of all the injuries that they've had in the absolute hole that they dug themselves to start the season. You also look at uh, Jags Bills. Bills 2 0 right now. Uh, Jags look pretty awful themselves. I mean, even though they made the extension with Trevor Lawrence, they have not been able to get that offense going. And it's actually a really big concern for me. But looking at tonight's matchup with the Patriots and Jets, I'm really curious to see what happens because Aaron Rodgers he hasn't looked phenomenal. But one guy that has looked phenomenal is Ramondre Stevenson. And you see Coach Gerard Mayo. He's really been relying on him to be the lead back for them and be the leader of the offense and the guy that they can go to to keep themselves in the game. Because the defense is still good for the Patriots, especially since you have a defensive-minded head coach. But as you look at tonight's matchup, I'm really hoping to see what we can see, what we expected from Garrett Wilson. Um, I'm not too sure what we'll be able to see. I'm really hoping to just see a touchdown in general because I thought we would have seen one by now. Uh, but we haven't. Like, I thought we could have seen one on uh, Monday Night Football against the 49ers. Thought maybe we could see it last week. 
I haven't seen it yet. I thought this was going to be a great connection, and so far it's been kind of average at best. Um, you kind of also look at other teams. You look at the Bills, or you look at the Commanders and Bengals. That one's really interesting. That's going to be the one of the two Monday Night Football games. The other one is Jags and Bills. Um, but outside of that, I'm looking at some of the other matchups. It's really interesting to see what's going to happen later on. Um, but there's really also some stinkers as I'm looking at it. Giants, Browns, I don't think many people want to watch that. Colts, Bears, hopefully the Colts can get that win. This is a perfect opportunity for them to do so. Bears, honestly, to me, should be 0-2. Should be going into it 0-3, but as of right now, I expect them to go 1-2 with the Colts finally getting their first win. Um, but outside of that, a couple of mad games. Definitely am not interested in seeing Panthers, Raiders. I don't care if Andy Dalton's actually going to make this Panthers team look a little bit better. Still not really worried about it. But then you also look at Dolphins, Seahawks. What's going to happen with the Dolphins now that Tua is not going to be on the field? And can Seattle actually get to that surprising 3-0 start? That's when I actually will get to that point. But that's going to do it for another edition of Cleats and Sneaks. Appreciate you listening in. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel ESPN Southwest Louisiana. We'll be back with the recap of Week 3 and also take a look at Week 4 after this. Appreciate you listening in. I'll talk to you next week.